Right, last time we introduced rearrangement in inequality. The idea is that uh, if you have two sorted uh, sequences A and N, and the product sum will achieve the maximum if they are in order, and the minimum if they are reverse order with each other, or in between would be the other permutation, you know, of the of the orders. All right. So last time we also look at uh, one example. So the intuition is that uh, this is a greedy algorithm, right? So it's very easy to um, to understand intuitively. But uh, in terms of the, uh, you know, we had a proof of this inequality last time, right? So check out the previous video if you have not done so. And today we're going to try to prove uh, this theorem here, right? So before we do that, we're going to introduce some notations here, you know, for easy reasoning. So here we're going to have tk, which is the first k terms of the sorted sequence. Remember, we assume bi is increasing order. In other words, tk would mean would be sum of the k smallest. So of course, tk would be smaller than sk because sk is the sum of the k term, not necessarily in the sorted order, right? So we have sk is going to be greater or equal to tk. However, when k equal to n, if you have all you know, elements and then sum them together, so these two must equal to each other, so we have Sn equal Tm. And then another uh, uh, thing to notice that uh, is An is also in the increasing order, so which means Ak minus 1 is smaller than Ak, the difference will be negative number here, all right? So with that, let's uh, try to look at uh, you know, the permutated, uh, you know, product sum here, yeah. We claim that each um, item here is actually the difference of, you know, S2 minus S1, you know, this gives you the, you know, B pi 2 here, right? And this is a, uh, S1 is a B pi 1, and so on and so forth. Now, however, you notice that uh, you can combine, um, here s by looking at uh, s1 is going to be a2 a1 minus a2 right plus s2 you're going to be a2 minus a3 and so on and so forth what you left with you left with a and sn at the end and you may have sn minus 1 a m minus 1 minus a m now for each term when you look at it here a1 minus A2 is a elective number, and S1, you know, earlier we claimed that uh, Tk is uh, smaller or equal to Sk. So in this case, you know, S1 is going to be greater or equal to equal T1, right? Now, if you multiply an elective number, you have to flip the inequality sign here. So if I, if I multiply an elective number here, S1, A1 minus A2, T1, this would be elective, okay? And for other um, S2 or S3 would, it, would be similar results. So let's now try to prove the theorem, okay? So step by step. So here, w you know, we rewrite it in, in this format. We, we rely on the earlier, you know, reasoning that this is smaller or equal to this one. Right, so however, by definition, you know, T1 is just a uh, you know, A1, right? So, here, what you can combine with A1 is A1 T1, right? Plus for A2, you're gonna have T2 minus T1, yeah, plus A3 T3 minus T2. Now this is actually nothing but b1, this is nothing but b2, this is nothing but b3. So this is actually the in-ordered one, right? So here we have proven that the permutated one is smaller than the in-ordered one, which is the first half of the inequality, right? So we have proven the first part. Now we need to prove the second part of the inequality. Right, so you may be able to prove the second half by following similar steps, right? But 
we're going to introduce maybe a simpler approach. As a matter of fact, we try to use the first half to prove the second half. All right, let's do that. So the key here is that you have two sequences. You know, I have a n is increasing order. I have b n in the increasing order also. But if I have multiply elective sign, and then the inequality can change signs, right? So I'm 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 going to do that for the bn. So bn would be smallest, and the elective b1 would be biggest in that case, right? Now what I want to do is I take these two sequences together. Yeah. So the in order is the biggest, which means a1 negative bn, yeah, because this is in order, plus a2 negative bn minus 1, plus so on and so forth. And here would be a n times negative b1. That's going to be greatest, greater than the permanent one, which is a1 with some other numbers here, right? Some some number b, whatever some pi one, and things like that. And since we have elective here, you get rid of elective, but then you have to switch, um, flip the inequality here. So what you get is a one b n plus a two b n minus one is going to be less or equal to the permitted one. This is exactly the second half, which means the reverse order. This is the reverse order. This is the permutated order. This is some order, which is the second half of the rearrangement inequality. All right. So the second half is proven by using the first half. The trick here is uh, you're going to use elective bi as the sequence. You consider these two sequences. Okay, So that's the trick. OK, the highlighted one are the, the important steps. All right, so that is for the proof. And uh, we're going to um, one thing we notice is that um, the rearrangement inequality can be expressed in a different way. If this sequence is decreasing order, the inequality still holds. So what really matters is, is that the ranking must be the same, the in order versus out of order. So this is an in order, which means the item is like the same rank. This is reverse order. The rank is reversed, and this is a permutative, okay, out of order. All right. So we're going to try to prove AMGM inequality using the rearrangement inequality. All right. Let's do that. So in this case, we need to try to come up with A and B. N. Well, so what is A and what is B? N? All right. So it turns out that uh, what we can do. This, this quantity, the geometric mean, for easy notation, let's call it t. All right? So I'm going to construct a n sequence like this. I'm going to have x1 over t, x1, x2 over t square, and so on and so forth, until x1, x2, xn over t n's power. Of course, you notice that this the finally this is equal to one, right? So what is the b n sequence? You just flip it. You know, in other words, b i equal one over a i. So in this case, I'm gonna have t over x i, x one, t square over x one, x two, and so on so forth. And the final one is one. So one key observation is that in if we're doing this. If we do a i 
pi the summation here this I claim that this is the reverse order one why because when a number is greater than another number x greater than y positive number 1 over x would be smaller than y right so the rank would be reverse so the rearrangement in quality tells us that this summation would be smallest than the permutated one so what is the permutated one so we're gonna we're gonna say a one with the previous term but the one the previous term would be bn right plus a2 b1 plus a3 b2 and so on and so forth and here you know and at the end you're gonna have uh, a m b and minus one all right so but when you look at this this is nothing but x1 over t because b n equal one plus a2 which is x1 x2 over t square times b1 is t over x1 and then cancel cancel t cancels here what do you get x2 equal over t and so on and so forth what do you notice that is exactly every term is xn over t x3 over t all right so so basically earlier if ai bi because here we know that a i b i equal to one so there's n terms so the first term is actually n term here smaller or equal to right smaller or equal to this one this one equal what equal x1 plus plus xn over t now if you swap n and t what do you get you get t smaller or equal to n x1 plus x2 plus xn this is a arithmetic mean this is a geometric mean so we just prove the theorem here right by constructing a and b n all right so try to review the step make sure you you understand and and try to prove it yourself all right so we're going to have exercise for you you know try to prove this statement where a b c are positive in, uh, positive numbers sum up to one and then you prove that uh, the sum of squares is greater or equal to one third all right so give it a try and uh, uh, we're going to um, show the solution in the part three of this video where we're going to show this example and a few other examples and hope you enjoy the video and please subscribe to the channel thank you